In with another cloud talk, this time on the official Debian image status. So. Take it away, Jimmy. Hello. So, um, so official Debian image status is a sort of interesting concept. So far, Debian has, you know, Debian is a universal operating system. We have it on our website and our slide banners right next to the screen. Um, we've historically shipped images for CDs, for USB, for live images, etc., embedded devices, but we haven't shipped until recently images for public cloud kind of environment. And I say public cloud because when you're doing private cloud, it's for use internally and the technologies are often the same, but customizations for internal use are common and they're really separate from the notion of what's official Debian from Debian's perspective as a project because when you do something as Debian, when you offer something as official Debian and offer it to a third party, that's when it's actually relevant what you're calling it. Um, so that's why the public cloud environment is relevant. It's a very unusual environment. There's a weird background thing below the cloud and uh, it has to integrate well. Luca Nussbaum, the uh, Debian project leader, said in a discussion in April on, on the Debian cloud list, now official Debian image, I don't think that for public clouds, he referred to a different cloud, official has been explicitly defined. And it's true, we should define it, it's a bug. You know, this is something we should have an answer to. So that's what I'm trying to figure out as a conversation to start with you all. Uh, so what does official mean? Okay, it's an adjective, great. Um, but what does Debian need here from the notion of an official Debian image or, or from the reality? And what do the public clouds need here on, on, the, on the, uh, the vendor side, for example, whether that's a large company like uh, Amazon or Google, or whether it's a small one like GPL host, for example. Um, you know, the, the, the needs are more similar than you think, but they're not the same, you know, so we should discuss the differences and the similarities and sort of bridge the gap is what I'm, I'm just trying to, gonna, I'm gonna try to go through the slides quickly, but not too quickly so that you can follow my voice, <laughs> but um, then we should discuss, it's a buff. So we also need to figure out how Debian works with the cloud vendors uh, and it's a reciprocal collaborative relationship and then we have a lot of time to talk and hopefully we'll come up with some criteria. But it's, a, it's one 45 minute session so really we'll just make some progress toward it or start the conversation. Um, so one of the things that makes Debian Debian is of course our social contract and anything that is officially Debian should respect our social contract, comply with the free software guidelines, and focus on users' needs. Those are the two core principles of Debian. We should stick with that. Anyone who uses something that's officially Debian should be able to rely on their trust of Debian to trust the image. They should be able to anchor their trust in Debian. This extends to packages and repositories, to image builds and how to discover the images, at least one way of discovering the images. They should be able to find them through Debian. You know, they should get Debian security fixes, updates from Debian, you know, they should be able to rely on Debian as a source. And again, things that are officially Debian are done within the Debian community. The build tools are discussed on Debian Cloud, you know, there's Debian mailing lists, IRC. And where the code should live is a little bit more complicated. Some things are happening on GitHub these days, some things are Debian.net, which is sort of official, some things are happening, you know, in various different contexts, but we should pay attention to these issues in any case. Um, Debian needs to be able to support the images. Uh, users have issues, they come to Debian via whatever mechanism they want to contact us, we need to be able to help them. Uh, and quality assurance and testing are especially noteworthy because we don't have a good solution for this now in cloud images. For typical desktop or server install, we test this a lot in our normal release engineering framework and we test upgrades, we test packages, we test the whole system. But for the cloud images, there's no really good way to test that we have yet and we need to solve it. Right now we just uh, do a couple of manual tests and 
you know, for the Google images, we have some incomplete but useful internal tests to run, et cetera. But it, Debian should have an answer to this. It would be a good thing. Um, so everything I just said applies equally from the perspective of the cloud vendors. They need to pay attention to licensing and, in their case, legality more, f more than specifically freedom, but it needs to meet all the needs. And users come to them with concerns, especially paying customers, but really every, every source of uh, feedback. Um, users often trust Google or Amazon or whoever's providing it to them, GPL, and, and they need to be able to rely on that trust to trust an OS that they are being provided. The vendors and the um, operating system folks have their ways of development and they need to work well together or use one set of tools to develop solo or however the relationship is going to work in that case. Um, and they also need to support, they offer support contracts, people use their forums, they need to make sure that their reputation will be upheld by the quality of the product, etc. cetera. Um, but, there, but, but wait, there's more. There's other uh, requirements in the cloud context. So some of the unique concerns, a lot of them revolve around a motorcycle, but others re <laughs> revolve around the fact that clouds release faster than the two-year release cycle of a you know, slow-moving conservative enterprise distributor like Debian. They, you know, they, they, they need some speed to handle things like performance and security fixes. So I have some examples here, but the general category is, you know, customers, internal or external paying customers notice a problem and they, you know, complain to the vendor, the, the team, whatever the right category is. And getting an upstream fix is something to work on and it takes time, but sometimes something needs to be done quickly to satisfy business needs. Um, so some, we had some examples that we've experienced at Google. Um, the, when we switched to Debian as a default from a previous default distribution, we, uh, there was a performance regression in networking for about 20%. That's a significant regression. Uh, and the kernel was the same. Right now we're not using the Debian kernel. That's a temporary thing. We're going to fix that. But
as a report to that you've already done. So with that, let's, let's just stop. Great. So I'm going to say yes, I agree, obviously, um, with what you're saying. I think, sorry? That one there. That's right. um, it is important, and I think so far that the approach that we've taken is to have fair minimal um, in terms of stuff in the Amazon um, That's something that, that I'm hoping that we're going to get a few people here actually to talk up about and say what should be included. To my mind, uh, my personal opinion, um, we've got a couple of paths in front of us for, for um, not just what we consider is uh, official, but um, the additional tools and things like that. I know it's going to partly start to take a talk for tomorrow. Um, I think we need to choose whether or not we're going to do base images, as totally base images, everything from Maine, nothing from anywhere else, or whether we're going to cherry pick bits and pieces that we need for each other. Um, now, I think the final stuff is, is really quite interesting. For those that are familiar with um, CloudNet, it is now packaged, but it's not in uh, the main archive, it's in backports. Um, we discussed on the, the cloud list whether or not we should um, request it to pull that into May and a point release coming up, or we're going to have to wait until Jesse comes out. I don't think it's going to get now. Yes. Yeah. yes. Sorry. So, this could I was the last question in the team, I have not to say. The answer is that it's not what you do. They then come back to take something from the uh, testing and put it in the current table. And the discussion is stopped there. But maybe you can ask again the team. I, I think that the, the impact on that, though, obviously, is, is as, as you say, um, cloud is not a two-year recycle. Um, and we have large numbers of, of users, and I'm talking of dead in hand users, um, who are using this now, who are having to wait. And, and we could fix this. Um, and again, this morning we talked about the policy of whether or not we include that into uh, backports, then put mm -hmm. into base images. And then the conversation that involves around security updates and some bigger issues to do that. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of questions in here. So I want to sort of echo what, what the team is saying. It also gets more complicated when it's both CloudNet and HP Open Cloud Tools yeah. and Yuka Tools and you know GPU Hill. Mm -hmm. And we're all trying to move toward Debian main and do the right thing. The important thing from the customer perspective is that they have a way to have an expectation that from both Debian applications and vendor cloud applications and customer applications it's all combined. In a way that makes everyone happy. I, I would like to see not only the things that are in the image to be in Debian main, uh, I would like also to be to have all the tools to create the image to be in Debian main. Agreed. Therefore, I'm not... Uh, the idea to use a certain cloud provider and you got tools to use that cloud provider to create the, the, the image, I don't like it. Well, I, I think all prefer, of these tools are going would, to main. I, I would prefer that we use only tools that are on main and that we can build the image only in Debian and not using a cloud provider to do it. So you, you could tools is in main actually. Yeah. However, Everyone wants that in main. However, obviously one of the problems we've got is the version of Yuka tools that we have in right. main is from what year? I'd it say depends, 2010 sure. or 11. Um, and the rate of innovation that's going on with, with all of the cloud providers is that sometimes those, the API calls that, that Yuka Tools is doing from 2011, which is in, in stable now, is just too out of date. I previously had a mention of but, API lifecycle and question, it's an issue across all the clouds, yes. The question also could be, why do you use Yuka Tools at all? You don't need to do that. You can just create your image in a CH root and it just works. That's what I did well, with my thing, the, 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 with the, my script. The Google Compute Engine images don't actually use Yuka Tools, but, which I guess makes sense because it's a different infrastructure, but the, um, the basic problem of fast changing APIs and fast the ways of interacting with the cloud and the feature sets and customer expectations, they all change faster than a two year life cycle. So it's why, a why interacting with the cloud when you build your image at all? I didn't hear that. Why would you interact interact with the cloud? I 
as Debian to just well, do the upload. That's a different problem. Come I on, think. Could, could you let him respond? Yeah. Yes, so you can build it outside of the cloud, and maybe, you, I don't know if you can really validate it outside. Some of the cloud, and with any cloud, you need to validate it before you publish it. So either way, the workflow of Debian needs to interact with the cloud. But good. V validating and building the image is two different processes Agreed. that could be separated, sure, right? But, but even then, past that, there, there, the contents of the image. Customers really expect that to not work with the version of the product that existed two or three years ago or a year ago, but right. the version of the product that exists now. So all the, 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 the tool, I, I assume Amazon sticks tools into the, don't you don't stick in, tools in the images, but Google we sticks tools in the images we want for to. customers to integrate. So when they bring up the, the, the Debian operating system, they can interact with all the other products inside of Google. And, and one of the simple things you might want to interact with the, the cloud environment with is, hey, I've got three extra volumes mounted. I want to snapshot them. So that's, that's an API call. I should just now make one. It, obviously, within your uh, block device, if you've got something like LVM, or you could do that. Yeah, but, locally, but why does it have something to do with building an official Debian cloud image? Uh, can I? That's the topic, This right? image, this, this, this sub-discussion is also overlapping very much with the packaging <laughs> buff tomorrow morning. So I, I think we should have this discussion, but it's, this, we should probably save it for part of tomorrow morning aspects of, of what my slides and the general concepts uh, need to discuss. Yeah. yeah. So one comment about the versions in main of the tools that you are using to build the images. It's not like the official other Debian thingy we have, like the proper CD release, are right. made using software, which is entirely even packaged in the archive. So I think it's great to set high standards, but I don't think that before being able to call something official, we need to, to be able to build it only with stuff which is in the current main, which would mean essentially being always one release behind right. in the build dependencies of the image with respect to the content of the image. It might be reasonable to allow stuff from unstable because we even do DI with yes, different mixing versions, example. you know. Yeah. that even if there is an absolutely unsurmountable problem, we will not have official images that cannot be built entirely using free software. Which means not using Amazon and they are not part it means, of it means not, Debian. It means that you have to have a way to build the image without using those. And by the way, neither of our images, neither Amazon nor requires you to use the proprietary cloud to build the image. You can build an Amazon image in Eucalyptus, you can build a Google Compute Engine image on your workstation. It, it works. So, yeah. so I think there are two different issues that are a bit mixed in the discussion. It's a bit yes, confusing. thank you. One is uh, how do we build the I think that for that, uh, we need to be as close as possible to usual Debian practices. Yes. Uh, and ideally, that means uh, having a tool that is packaged in Debian, unstable for now is fine. Uh, on iOS, not on GitHub, for example. Uh, so that it's easy for uh, existing GDs to join the team, etc. Well, everything do it uh, as we do in Debian usually. Then there's the question of the content of those images. And if it's an official Debian image, I think that it needs to be as close as possible, as realistically possible, to uh, what we ship on a CD, what you get when you install Debian using a CD or something else. And uh, I understand your point about uh, customers wanting different kernel versions of whatever, but if it's not what, sh what we ship in Debian, then, uh, well, we have to stick with what we ship in Debian if it's an sure. official Debian image. Sure, 
if you have more than two yeah. or three packages that differ from right. the standard Debian installation, or that if you have configuration differences, sure. then it's not longer official Debian. However, at the same time, what we ship in Debian is already death -tick. What we ship on an ARM machine is different than what we ship on an x86 machine, including the bootloader, for example. There are support tools that might be included on a default S390 installation that are different. And so while I think it should be officially Debian in some way, it's not obvious that in 2013 or 14 or 15, whenever we have the solution, it's not obvious that CD f fixed offline distribution needs to be the reference point. It's a, it's a topic of discussion, right? I'm not saying I am forcing an answer here. It's an, like, like James said in his talk, it's a matter of Debian evolving its consensus. It's, but whatever it does has to be something that Debian is okay calling official, but the nature of what the reference is can be more situational sometimes. I, I think I'd like to echo what, what uh, Jimmy said. I think you would even agree that the, the cloud really is another architecture, right? It's just different fundamentally from the, the typical way that Debian has been installed and published before. And I think maybe one of the things that is really necessary is not just to think about what Google or what Debian official is. Maybe there is a Debian official, right? Maybe there is just a, the pure free software version mm -hmm. that only works on some clouds that have the right tools and so forth. You know what I'm saying? All, the, all their software happens to be open source and all their APIs are, you can build everything outside of the world, outside of their world, right? But sometimes, I mean, I don't think Google's is like this and I don't think Amazon's like this, but I s can easily see other clouds needing uh, uh, more, more proprietary tools. I don't think and that's in, something in, Debian's in ever that, been able to have. <laughs> in that sort of circumstance, I would still like to see Debian having some sort of branding, which is there's the Debian official, but then there's the Debian mm. inspired or the Debian no. Debian Cloud Edition. Yeah, something like this. That, yeah. I mean, that, 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 that Debian Cloud Edition becomes at work. Do we include things like SDKs and things like that? Or do we just say, well, the SDKs, if they're already in main, because obviously we are all publishing our SDKs right. as, as uh, DSFG compatible so, licenses. Do so we let just me, put that in the basics? Let me take a step back from what's in the image. The customer expectations don't care what's in the image. The customer expectations care what's easy for them to do. That's all they care about. It is possible, the, like, the reason it's useful to have in packages in repositories in the image is because app lets you update things and lets you see what's installed and remove and add things. So the important thing like if there's a way to avoid putting certain things in the image and yeah. have it be easy for customers to use things in ways that meet customer, the needs of people who are paying Google or Amazon money or people who are paying GPL host money or what have you, the, you know, having a way to meet customer needs is the goal. It doesn't matter so much what's the image. Yeah, uh, I'd like to uh, have a look to what happened in Ubuntu. In Ubuntu, they have a cloud image that works in most clouds Okay, they made technical choices so that it can happen. Uh, Cloudinit is an initiative from Canonical to do that. And if uh, um, instead of adding specific HP tools or Google tool or whatever to the image, if we could just contribute to Cloudinit so that it would, we would continue to have a unified system and try to do it that way for all the other components, then maybe we have a chance to have one unique cloud image that will work for all. It's, uh, um, it's, it's always good to in improve standards. And as I say in this slide, it's a start. I think I'm, ha I'm happy for that. Um, but it, there's definitely things that cloud in it, that it, it's out of scope because cloud in it, from what I understand, it's even an initialization time thing. Uh, you know, it, uh, doesn't handle, I mean, maybe with Upstart or Systemd it can handle network changes, but for example, any System 5 init based system or anything where the needs, like I don't think even Upstart can handle account management during the lifetime of a VM, uh, you know, just as an example. Uh, so it might be possible to change the scope of cloud init or whatever, but like it certainly won't handle the QA and testing workflow, right? I mean, we, we need, the, the problem is broader. Do you think we're uh, getting a little too granular here? I mean, things like Puppet and Chef and Juju take over where that leaves off. Do we really need that to be a part of any official build as far as Debian is concerned anyway? Puppet, the whole point of Debian is yeah. that it's, it's universal. universal right. you know, so. Puppet and Chef take, you know, Puppet and Chef 
meet the customer specific needs as managed by the customer. I would say lots of customers will be installing Puppet or Chef or Juju on Debian and that's great. But I don't think, I think for that very reason actually we shouldn't interfere with whatever they do for their Puppet or Chef install. So I don't think we're stepping on, we shouldn't step on them, we shouldn't interfere with them. But the, I mean, if, if there's some other easy way for them to, you know, interact with whatever their vendor environment is in a nice way. I, I agree that we should only ship free software. I'm fine with that. But, uh, you know, aside from the licensing side of things, you know, the important thing is to provide some way. And I don't think it should be Puppet or Chef simply because the customers will often use that and they should control that. I'm sorry. I'm going back to the uh, content of the image. Uh, yeah. The discussion of what should be in an image and an official image, I mean, this uh, the answer to what is an official image exists already. An official image is just free software. There are some uh, CD image made by Debian with non-free firmware. It's produced by Debian. It's not the official image. Right. And if some package needs ha needs to be added to the in Debian for for specific clouds, sure. I think it's not a problem. We have had uh, H and a half, which included more uh, updated sure. software to add support, and it was done during a uh, stable release. Sure. Well, so I if as far as, you know, as far as unofficial images that are all free software, Amazon and Google already ship those. Both of our images contain only free software. They are built with only free software, and they, um, you know, they are close enough to Debian that we've checked with the trademarks folks with Debian. It's fine to call it Debian, et cetera, et cetera. but uh, they are not official Debian, which is a bug, as, as I've said. Um, so there's no issue of like the non-free firmware CD images because we're not shipping non-free software. It's all free software. Everything Google's released to this is Apache yes. license. Yes, but in the same way, everything of an official image can only be made with stuff in Debian, and that's easy to, to right. achieve. So yeah, I mean the, the real problem here yeah. is is the time frames, right? I think it. At least from my perspective. Why? So, so when, when what kind of problem? Well, so when Google creates new software to stick inside of their VMs, new bug fixes, new why features, why new features, new bug fixes, when they enter the Google code base, and we want to push them out to users, it's unclear to us how we get them into the Debian main tree quickly enough so that we can push that image to to customers. Exactly, and so our customers are then left with an experience in which they can only use the official Debian image with like a subset of the Google features, or they can use the other operating system that looks and feels like Debian, which isn't really Debian, how, how that does integrate. How is that different from imp uh, uh, upgrading hardware support? It's not that much different, except that our... There is a difference. Except, that was my point. except for the speed. We upgrade right. our cloud every month or two, <laughs> right? Yes, a typical hardware installation of Debian, the hardware will not be changed every month or two, whereas in the cloud, it will. Yes. So yes. I think... But not for the same customer. For, the, for new customers, yes. I mean, we have a, the thing is, you're asking about hardware support in Debian Stable. Don't defend the status quo as a good thing. It's actually a big problem that one month before Weezy's release, Squeeze was not usable on most machines that were recently released. And uh, Ben Hutchings had a buff about that yesterday afternoon, treating it as a problem to be fixed. So I agree that that's the way it is in stable, and it's a bug as well. So I think there are two separate things here. Again, one is the notion of what's sufficient and what's not, and the other right. are the release criteria. So for the st standard Debian releases, we have a release team, okay, and it's not like the notion of they are doing the official images is what concern, what constrains them to do releases every two years. Right. They can compromise or they cannot compromise depending on how they work and they do decide their own uh, release goals and try to enforce them with the help of the other developers. So one thing are the criteria on what's official and what's not. And I think those criteria should be entirely on the basis of Debian practices and on the basis of uh, uh, free software in contain the images and free software used to build them. Mm -hmm. The, const the, sorry, the, um, uh, the kind of release policy that should be used is something different. Mm -hmm. So I, w ideally what we should have is something like a, a small release team, just because I'm assuming right now the release team is not interested in also doing the, uh, the, the, the release work for the images. So having a 
smaller release team for the cloud images that decides what are the release policy for those images. Mm -hmm. So ideally, they should be close to the uh, release policy for the main releases, but if there are specificities of the cloud environment that justifies having different policies, why not? So in fact, I think you should cut in two halves the list of criteria you have. Mm -hmm. Some criteria will be to bless what is uh, official and not, and let's be clear, official or not just mean that it's something that you are willing to promote on the main with Debian website and so on, so on and so forth. They can exist other images somewhere else which are made by some random guy which just says, okay, this is, I took Debian and I rebuilt it for this cloud. Okay, it's not promoted by Debian, but I don't think we're going to chase him for uh, trademark infringement anytime soon, okay? As long as it's not use the Debian name to ship malware or whatever. Okay, and something else are the release criteria, the quality criteria, and that's, for me, it's an entirely different discussion. Mm -hmm. Maybe what we need is just deciding who are the release, ma the release people doing the cloud releases for specific clouds and be done with that. Yeah, and uh, there's certainly more ways of evolving the must be in main requirement without changing the nature of it. It might be must be in main in some part of Debian, you know, it must be available from the Debian archive. It might even relate to the new PPA main thing that the FTP team was talking about in May, where there's going to be additional faster moving repositories hosted on the Debian infrastructure. I'm not wedded to one solution. Yeah, I, I completely agree about the two, the two halves here, but there's also the third half, which, <laughs> would, would, which would also help for anybody who's building an image instead of the release team, right? The, one of the problems that I know I have is I run through uh, build Debian cloud, right? And I know I modified it to do X, Y, and Z, add this package, add this package, remove this package, remove this package, modify this file, modify this file, modify this file. Is it good? Right? I don't know. Right? I think it's good. It works for me. It does all the stuff that I think my customers expect. But then the look and feel of Google's Debian is slightly different from the look and feel of Amazon's right. Debian. A few extra packages, a f a config files changed, password login disabled, root login enabled, disabled, who knows? And, and some of those are, are motivated, motivated by like, the security teams at Google who are like, no, you mustn't, you mustn't allow root login on your machines, even via SSH, because like, every 30 seconds you can see someone's trying to cr crack into the SSH there. So let me add one on to that. Um, what about deny hosts as default? or fail to ban as default. So right now, by the way, yeah, the so Debian images do not disable, the, the, the Debian images right now have permit root login, yes. They would, as he says, they would prefer that no because they are getting attacked every few minutes. Right. Which, but, let's but, not but, get what, sidetracked on this though. But what I really want to have, yes. what I really want to know is, huh? what, you don't know what I would say. is what the standard is and even better yet, have a so set of tools that we can run that would say yes, no. My package? to do the uh, OpenStack Debian image has been rejected by the FTP masters because it was allowing root login. So that's it, it was allowing that's root answer. login, that's the Debian default. No, no, because OpenSSH is not installed, installed by default. What? OpenSSH is not installed by default. Ah, well, it, I mean, at the same time though, our images don't have a root password by default or root SSH keys by default, so by default, you actually can't. You, there's no ability to access root via SSH, so that issue is different. It, it's it's uh, right by default. You know, we have our SSH key management thing with non-root accounts and with passwordless sudo. But but I think but I yeah. think deny host. I mean, that's one of the first things that I installed. Um, is that something that we should have in all of our our cloud images, um, and would we consider that as as a, an official image? Um, because we don't put deny host in a, a, a standard Debian image, or should we? That was my question. Well. Why, why, Again, for most questions, maybe we should just take, go back to say, is it really specific to clouds? Yes, yes, it totally is. Right? There, the there environment are, there are, that, no, that I, these I, things are operating in is so different. No, from I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't agree with oh. deny hosts. I think deny hosts Should is something that is universally useful. As soon as you install SSH, there's a, probably a pretty good chance that you should have deny hosts installed or, or fail to ban well, or whatever implementation you I like, mean, which is Those SSH might be failure. good things to add. They are also uh, somewhat error prone, but I, you know, the, I mean, in this case, I, I, we should try to focus on the general issues in this mm. chat. And so in, in the context of this point, the general issue is twofold. One of them is you know, making sure that we can validate things given the differences in the clouds and, and across clouds, and we needed some QA. But um, yes, that, the, it, there, it, there are like, the, 
the attacks every 30 minutes or every 30 seconds against root on these machines is more common in the cloud. What I think is important is to provide our users to create the image they want. Yes. So like, if they want deny host, fail to ban or, or whatever, if it can be a simple option that you can switch on the tool that is building the image in which hopefully will be in main, yeah. and then we have everything solved. And, and that is the case. You basically say dash dash package yeah, cloud ban yeah, or sure. whatever, and, and it's generated. So is that in the build script, do you say? Yeah, yeah. yeah okay. d d um, I, mean that is, I assume that's what you're using to add and remove packages, is it not? Yeah, I mean, well, I think the thing is customers we found don't want to run build Debian Cloud to build an image. They just want something there by default and maybe a couple of options. That's all they want. And, Most and 99 you, percent of our customers. Yes, but you've provided only one flavor of the image. What about providing one which is the basic standard so and one which is oh, we've modified I, this, this, and this, let, and it's improved security? Me, let, me, let me tell you. So right oh. now we've got, I don't know, we've got two versions, two main tracks, and in those tracks we've got like a thousand versions of each Debian with different versions of different things released, and that's already a lot for our customers to ingest. So if we gave them 12 more versions of each track with different so options, or two, even so, this is where four, this, this is where <laughs> even two, two or three. Well, this is where blends come in. I mean, should each blend be its own image on the cloud? If I wanted to start up Debian Scientific, should that be its own image? Yeah, th that's one of the things that which. I think is very interesting. Maybe we can talk about that later or today. You will tell. Um, one thing we could do in Debian as well would be to provide appliances. How about an image mm -hmm. that does HA proxy, an image that is right. pre-configured pre for PHP or whatever? So, so since we so have about eight minutes left, I just want to ask if anybody who hasn't said anything has any points they want to raise or ask. I should just give a moment to ask that question. Okay. So. Uh, Zach earlier mentioned okay. several release managers, one per cloud infrastructure. I don't even, okay, but I don't even see what that's needed because I'm totally fine with uh, cloud providers customizing, uh, crea well, creating custom Debian-based images with er all the customizations they want yeah. to make the user, the user experience of their customers better. No, we are talking about official Debian images. I right. don't see why uh, the cloud image on AWS should be different from the one on GCE. I mean, well, the I think the content should be. The no, well, I think the content should be well, exactly I, I, the same. And if the user wants to do something different, he can just install more packages to change what so he wants yeah, to do. It's, it's, it's not that the image needs to be different in any essential way, although they actually have different formats to some degree. But uh, it's, it's more that they. It's the same thing with S390 versus x86. You can probably install tools to interact with a remote S390 machine on x86, or maybe those tools don't exist, but cross-compiling, et cetera. But there's no reason that a typical Amazon user would need GCUtil. There's no reason that a typical Google user would need Yuka tools. No, 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 They're allowed I mean, to use them, though. I, 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 maybe we should actually have all our tools on all our images because there's nothing to That's stop an EC2 yeah. instance calling your API right. to Right, they can to totally do it. You know, I, for it's the, for exactly the same reason why right. my laptop in front of me shouldn't have the tools available as well to do whatever interaction with it's, APIs it's that I want to install. They should all be able to have get installed. It's a question yeah. of what should be installed by default. But I agree actually, with you there. Are those, uh, those tools really needed from a user point of view? I'm not sure they are. What's needed it, depends, from it depends on what they're doing. Okay, if you're just no, after installing sure, less the, the goal is to no. provide the base image so that can install whatever they want for, for their yeah. needs. It's, not, it's like if, for, if, we, if we decided that when you install Debian uh, Shiva plug, you add Samba because Samba is cool and usually yes. people are using Shiva plug to storage. So, but, but That's not what we want to do. The real issue here is Debian has to choose, I think, if, 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 if you follow the consequence of your logic, Debian has to sort of choose whether whether they have the base, true, official Debian image that pretty much nobody in cloud uses because it doesn't integrate with, their, with all the cloud properties. And, or do you have versions or flavors of the official, of, that are base officially... and then enhanced. Or. Uh, yeah, it's base plus enhancements to integrate them to the cloud. And whether, whether or not Debian wants to get into the business of calling any of those official, if they don't care, then they don't care, and maybe people will just, maybe if some people will go and take the base image and download all the tools and install Remaster them just it. the right ways, yes. Mm. But that's complicated and hard, and most people, we find, don't want to do it. And I, I think the, the important thing to, to um, say here is we're not talking about somebody who's installing one machine or someone who's installing 10 machines. We're talking about customers who are spinning up you know, 20,000 machines for four hours, then getting rid of them, and they're doing the same thing the next day. 
And although, yes, you could do these customizations, and all of our images now support that. You can script this. It can be automated. But if you have three minutes of installing packages times 20,000 machines, you've got a large amount of time that you've just wasted installing stuff that we could have already had ready. Yes, but you're never going to meet those people's needs. No, you can't please never, all ever. the people So all those the people will not be able to use uh, Debian official image. They will customize it. Potentially, yeah, you're right. Maybe. So at some point, we have to decide, uh, let's add some task in, uh, in task cell and for more needs yeah. for people to... So, so one of the options... Are, sorry, Zach, go. So to clarify on that point, uh, you're totally right. I don't think we need to have some specific release manager for every single image. It could be one, and maybe he, should, he or she or the team should consider differences for different images, but it could be only a single authority. But the point here, I think your problem is that you lack authority. You, you don't know which authority in Debian has the final word on <laughs> deciding whether a specific customization you have made is acceptable yeah. or not. Yeah. So in the general Debian governance, we solve this because we have packages, and packages have a clear maintenance structure. Mm. So even if there are 10 different opinions on how something should be done, the maintainer has the final word. And for something which is more general, like the release of Debian as a whole, we have the release team, which has the final authority to decide what goes in and what goes out. Okay? We do not have that for Debian Cloud. So if you have done some specific customization, you post it to the Debian Cloud mailing list and you get five different opinions. Mm -hmm. Two of them are in favor, three of them are against. Yeah. So what we lack, I think, is a specific authority in deciding what can go in an official Debian image and what cannot go technically, which is entirely different from what is blessed from a, let's say, political point of view. So ideally, this should be some, some this, sorry, this should be something which is part of the release team, pretty much as in the release team, we have stable yes. release manager and the release manager for the, but if, to start with, they don't have the envy or they don't have the, the power or the energy to do that. We should start with a small separate team which fits in the usual Debian governance structure which has the final word of technically what can go in and what cannot go in. Mm. Bravo. Mm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so with two minutes left, let's keep talking. Uh, but I just want to mention David and I, and I think you and I th from Amazon, James, and I think Brian from Eucalyptus and Tama from GPL House, I think we're here the rest of the time, right? Anyone? Yeah, yeah. We're all here the rest of the conference, so let's keep the conversation going beyond the next can two I, can minutes. Can I add one other uh, mix on this? And, and Go I, ahead. I wanted to try and get the room's uh, opinion on this. Um, we've talked about adding tools in. What do we think about um, desktops? In the cloud? Yep, desktops in the cloud, as an AMI. Um, I've, I've played with it with RDP to a, a Debian instance. Um, unfortunately, I live on uh, quite, quite a number of milliseconds away from my local region. <laughs> um, but does anyone have a, a, a feeling? Or? Two minutes again. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Who's interested in that kind of stuff? Anyone? Show of hands? Yeah? Okay. Hang around, because we've got a 15 minute break between this and the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Thanks all for discussing. Let's keep chatting. Thanks for the conversation, yeah. everybody.